Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. Today, I'd like to talk about the difference between a valid argument and a sound argument. I've given the standard definitions of them in previous videos, but as I was thinking about it, I realized that the standard definitions only really make sense to someone who already knows a bit of formal logic. So I'm going to start with explaining the relevant bits of formal logic so that their definitions will make sense. Formal logic is primarily concerned with arguments. So, what is an argument? It has nothing to do with the modern sense of two people quarreling, nor does it have anything to do with the idea many people have of some sort of mental crowbar which can subdue anything it touches, something which twists your mind's arm until you cry uncle and admit the conclusion. An argument is a way that you can show the truth of something you haven't yet realized from the truth of things which you have realized. Its primary function is not to produce knowledge, but to clarify knowledge. An argument is a thing which can teach you what it is you already know, but didn't know that you know. From this primary function, an argument also has the secondary function of showing you how to go about finding out whether something is true if it can't be ascertained directly. I'll talk more about this later. So getting back to the primary purpose of an argument, it starts with things that you already know, and then shows you what else you know because of them. The things which you already know are called your premises. In this video, I'll stick to the classic examples, so suppose we know two things. 1. All men are mortal. 2. Socrates is a man. These two things are premises. But if we know them, we necessarily know something else, too. In particular, we know that Socrates is mortal. Or, in formal language, Therefore, Socrates is mortal. This is called our conclusion. Our argument relates our premises to our conclusion. If we know that the premises are true, we know that our conclusion is true, too. However, if the premises are false, it does not necessarily follow that the conclusion is false. If the premises are false, they simply tell us nothing about the conclusion. And please note, the argument doesn't say anything about whether the premises are true. Another way of looking at this is that it's a discussion of all possible worlds. Uh, those who haven't read books published over 100 years ago would probably call this all possible universes. It's the same idea. To say that the conclusion follows from the premises means that there are no possible worlds in which the premises are true, but the conclusion is false. To say that the conclusion does not follow from the premises means that there is at least one possible world in which the premises are true but the conclusion is false. It is not necessarily this world, mind you. An invalid argument can still have a true conclusion by accident. Okay, so all this probably makes sense, but why are we doing it? Why do we care what's true in all possible worlds when we only live in this one? There are two main reasons, which correspond to the primary and secondary functions of arguments I talked about before. The first reason is that in our present state, there is a big disconnect between what we subconsciously know and what we are consciously aware of. In essence, we know far more than we realize. Why there is this disconnect is a subject for another day, but it is a universal condition at present. It is helpful, therefore, to have tools to help us realize what it is we know on the basis of what else we are aware that we know. This is especially helpful in a world where so many people lie to us and try to cast doubt on what we know. Starting from the things that they don't lie about, and realizing the necessity of the truth of the things they do lie about, helps us to see through their lies. The second reason for worrying about what follows from premises in all possible worlds relates to things which we don't yet know. There are things that are easy to discover, if you're not being a hyperskeptic, but there are things that aren't. And for the things that aren't easy to discover, it is very helpful to know whether they are the necessary consequences of things which are much easier to discover. For example, it is relatively easy to determine the truth of whether there is a tree in your backyard. It is much harder to find out whether the earth is a sphere. In a direct sense, that is, actually seeing the curvature in all directions, it is basically impossible to do if one is not an astronaut. However, there are many things which are not difficult to observe, which have, as a necessary consequence, that the Earth is a sphere. There are many such things, I'll use one which Aristotle pointed out almost 2,500 years ago. 
The Earth's shadow on the moon is round, therefore the Earth must be round. But that does not necessitate it is a sphere. If it is flat, then ships which sail directly away will disappear at once. If it is a sphere, then they will disappear from the bottom first, and then the top will disappear. So all that is necessary to know, whether the Earth is a sphere, is to know how ships disappear as they sail away. And this is easy to find out by direct observation. I'm giving a simplified version of this, of course. There are intermediate steps in which one must invoke that water always seeks its own level, and so forth. But the point is that knowing what must hold in all possible worlds, given the premises, directs us to find a set of premises to investigate in order to know the truth of what we really want to find out. Thus we have the great utility of logic. By establishing which connections between things are certain, and which are not, we can know things which we cannot directly observe. So, at the end of the day, there are two big questions in logic. 1. Does the conclusion necessarily follow from the premises? 2. Okay, and are the premises actually true? The first question concerns validity. The name given to an argument in which the conclusion follows from the premises is valid. The name given to a valid argument in which the premises are true is sound. Validity is an extremely low bar since it admits of false premises. Still, it is very useful to know whether an argument is valid, since there's no point in ascertaining the truth of the premises if the conclusion won't follow from them anyway. Soundness is, ultimately, what we really care about, since sound arguments have necessarily true conclusions. This is the difference between a sound argument and a valid argument, and more importantly, why we care about that difference. Until next time, may you hit everything you aim at.